Guided by a vision of living architecture, Sathish Moses focuses on finding solutions to real-time environmental challenges by working closely with nature. Over the past 16 years, his experience spans a wide range of projects from micro to macro scales, emphasizing the circularity of materials and resource recovery. Sathish has worked on the development of biocomposites and explored how design and spatial applications in real-world environments can drive environmentally-led socioeconomic development within communities. Hi, uh, this is architect Sathish Tonsus of Mesa Meriting. Thank you, Thrive Project and the Thrive Team for uh, calling me to this webinar. Uh, today, in the purview of uh, sustainable cities and communities, I'll be talking on uh, how a transdisciplinary approach to a sea and marine ecosystem and uh, sustainable communities can be built through such a. So, sending the context, uh, the global footprint of human activities constantly in, I mean, uh, expanding. And uh, we are encountering a lot of uh, greater challenges today. So, we see a lot of fragmentation on these interconnected uh, systems and uh, the complex relationship between the people and the biosphere uh, has started fragmenting and each has started competing with each other. So if you look at the context of a local and a regional setting, uh, how this uh, fragmentation is fueling the city's wind farms and reading spaces, how this is fueling the detachment of these interconnected system. So, we are also looking at how traditional cities and spaces are us as an evolution of human culture. But uh, currently with the development, how these are getting detached. So in this context, so we see different uh, aspects of it. Like we see poor livelihoods, quality of hair, we see the forest fires, we see traffic congestion, urban heat air. There's poor detail. And uh, there are uh, much more human animal conversations. And we have also talked about land snakes. These are expressions of what is happening because of uh, this fragmentation. So I would want to set the context here, how transdisciplinary approach causes for a comprehensive uh, approach. So when uh, we start working on uh, disciplinary and silos, uh, the need for connecting all of these uh, disciplinary and silos on a very comprehensive board is where the role of transdisciplinarity comes in. So I just want to present this uh, using three scenarios which I have picked. The first scenario is, um, this is a mining uh, site which is located in uh, southern India. There is a huge volume of uh, line which is generated as a, a byproduct on a daily basis. When I say huge volume, uh, you can see in the numbers we're talking about 300 tons of waste like on a daily basis, 2,000 tons of watts on a daily basis. We want a scenario too. This is like a global uh, phenomena that is happening uh, throughout the uh, like, uh, globe, where uh, we're seeing a lot of marine habitat destruction happening due to climate change and uh, rising sea uh, temperatures and pollution, overfishing, all these are contributing to marine habitat destruction. So you see, uh, because of this manite habitat destruction, there is biodiversity loss, and that there is a community who are dependent on these bio, uh, biodiversity are uh, actually thrown out of their environment. Uh, and you, we look at how this marine biodiversity itself contributes to the overall GDP on a global scale. And when there is a biodiversity loss, what kind of losses that uh, we're not be about? So declining marine biodiversity and habitats is indirectly uh, triggering loss of phenomena like needles, uh, also from security of the community who are involved. So how does uh, trade and trade and thinking comes in this scenario? So that uh, I presented a scenario where we have work mining area which was at embodies per cycle and the second part of it is the biological cycle where uh, we talk the more uh, marine biodiversity so is there an interconnection which can be built in between these two entities that's where a cradle to cradle uh, grade and thinking helps when we went into detail of uh, this residual case like 
which uh, was uh, actually picked up from this mining uh, site. There was one component of this uh, baseline which was quite interesting, uh, which is this iron oxide, which uh, is, is around 55% composition in the overall uh, residue that was present. Now, is there a connection between this technical nutrient and the uh, biological cycle? So, when we found that there was phytoplanetons, which are the predominant uh, food chain generators in the Hanine ecosystem, and uh, they, they, they grow and reproduce on an iron-based uh, system. So, there was a pan, uh, connection. And how iron fertilization would improve carbon uh, dioxide capture uh, through these uh, phytoplanktons. And how the phytoplanktons are the fundamental of adding to chain. And how we will be able to integrate an ecosystem uh, using these uh, ambitions. So we, we went through different uh, uh, modules and experiments. And we found that uh, using traditional knowledge of how we can prepare uh, a water, these taste lines uh, can indeed become a marine substrate. And uh, you see there were a lot of experiments where we were able to uh, look at how carbon carbonation happens, which is directly related to the carbon sequestration, which can happen in a uh, ocean uh, carbon site. So this was entire composite once we bought a base composite. It was converted into a three-dimensional interlock system, uh, which uh, can actually scale up depending on the context that we are in group income. So how this interlocking design itself acts as a people model. So we, we will be able to bring uh, communities as part of uh, the ecosystem building. So interlocking advocates a participative approach. So the marine or the coastal community themselves can become the guardians of marine biodiversity. So with that purview in mind, so how resilience can be achieved at the intersection? So it is an intersection of ecosystem and it is an intersection of coastal community. So, and this was uh, how we have arrived at our living the so this interlocking uh, system can in fact uh, become part of the um, marine biodiversity facilitating type of plankton mode. We also looked at uh, how we can actually bring about calcite precipitation, which can also facilitate carbon sequestration in lines with the climate change on has. So when I draw a comparison uh, between the conventional reef to the DVD, uh, because of this interlocking and uh, the three-dimensional geometry, we are able to achieve 32 times more surface area compared to a normal system. This gives an opportunity for the biological cycle to set it with uh, higher surface areas. So, how can we adapt this uh, biodiversity and human well-being uh, at and with the spatial strategy and how we can actually bring about a living carbon sink which is an intersection of these two entities. So when we started exploring, we were looking at how these uh, systems that we have developed can become mangrove scaffolds and uh, coastal wetlands. And how this uh, scalable entities can uh, become coastal interfaces uh, so, how we will be able to create floating gardens and farming interfaces. And how this entire uh, uh, framework can uh, help us facilitate a hosting ecosystem. So, these are some of the uh, uh, visual images that uh, we have developed, how this can become a floating system, how this can actually create um, hosting systems, where wetland ecosystems and also managed by biodiversity. So, moving on to the third scenario, this is a typical Thailand city pocket in, uh, again in southern India, where you see the entire uh, pocket is completely hybrid, uh, high density in the Indian rubrics. Now, this creates an urban heat island effect. So, in the context of India, how this uh, scenario can be used to actually create carbon capturing communities. 
and also facilitate uh, passive cooling. So we are looking at two different cortex, like uh, hot and dry context in Pindurai, uh, uh, hot and humid context in Kati. How oh, we will be able to take a similar approach and uh, look at solutions uh, from this uh, circular. So that's where we came up with this idea of uh, living with the houses, uh, which are capable of carbon sequestration, and they're built using these uh, this TM slang composite and a three image structure. So this is this uh, slide uh, shows you an overall uh, scenario of how a thin image structure is uh, built with the, for the vendor reward and uh, how we have the quads and the TS line composite being part of the jacketing system and finally how this can actually become a three dimensional composite uh, within the 3D mesh framework. So the entire uh, Bottom is also integrated with the 3D mesh structure. Then we have developed an app system which is able to dink into the water. Uh, the entire main water that is falling within the sink is, uh, is immediately stored and captured, which is uh, looked at possibilities of utilizing for evaporated cooling. So these are some of the uh, images of uh, the structure while in construction where the, the entire 3D mesh is fabricated. And you see the entire skeleton of the house that we are trying to do is completely fabricated right from the foundation to the top level. And then uh, we use this maxillar fiber framework uh, using PC and Bavza and how we are able to create an artisanal interview. And then uh, all these uh, service uh, utilities are embedded within the system. Once we are able to embed all these systems, we actually go with the uh, one jacketing with the uh, glaze tank model. So these are other applications where we have used it for the uh, stab application, we have used it for the composite mix, we have also used that uh, floor application. And this is basically a blended composite of uh, the glaze line with uh, the traditional recipe of uh, fermented jaggery and also uh, other aggregates being part of the entire matrix. So I, I'm just showing you the slides of uh, where we actually looked at the uh, floor tile using these days and things. We also looked at the uh, options of built-in furniture. And that is the uh, two projects that you have completed using these A slides uh, in the part day So how this method, by developing this method, we are able to bring a, a, a new type of uh, system into the community itself. So it called for training this community and it was like a bridge between artisanal manufacturing. So you have a manufactured mesh and also a blended composite. This facilitates a new system of artisanal manufacturing within the community. So that's the image of the house, uh, all done detailed and how the structure st stands uh, as on today. So for the, what are we looking at it further is uh, what kind of, uh, uh, how, how do we actually scale up this uh, breathable house in building carbon capturing communities and also building eco communities. And what are the main uh, key takeaways? So we are using the silver trace lines by product of the industry process. We're using it as a carbon capture medium. We are also bringing in the integration of a re reinforcement 3D mesh structure. We are also bringing in a new system of artisanal manufacturing technique. This embedded rainwater, how it contributes to a passive public and environmental sustainability, especially in lines of energy efficiency, and how this overall system is an integrated circular approach. With this note, uh, I end the uh, presentation. Thank you, Thai Wansinian Khadi of Shibit. Thank you very much.